those of you who are new, welcome to Trending Thursday. What is Trending Thursday? Trending Thursday is all about looking at stocks that are in the news, uh, making the news. We look at them and look at other stocks that are in those industries within the news to see how they're faring. And we use the software to corroborate the story that it's good, bad, or indifferent. That's what we do. And at the end, I usually give some time to look at some stocks that you're individually trading or thinking about trading to put into the room as well. So as I can see, all of you all now are just talking amongst yourselves, not even bringing, not even talking to me. That's fine. Go ahead. Y'all can all talk to each other now. I don't want to talk to you. So I want to talk to all my new people that are here. Really want to say thank you all for being here, supporting this uh, venture that we have on social media. And um, hopefully you get to learn, excuse me, about some of the stocks that are out there that you're not paying attention to. Well, maybe the stocks that you do have, how the news is affecting them along the way. Plural from you all to y'all. Eh, it's all about the same thing. Uh, has this started yet? Jay, are you talking? What is that? Okay, there's Joey doing some Joey stuff in the background. By the way, for all of you who don't know, I'm a Duke fan. Here's my Duke cup where I drink my, um, my Cafe Bustello in. Joey is a Carolina fan, but I'm a Duke fan. Drink my coffee. Mm. Cafe Bustello, the unofficial official coffee of Glenn Tompkins and Vector Vest. All right, so what happened to Michigan? Michigan's got, we got, we pulled the bad, um, the bad straw because we're playing Alabama in our bowl game. Who wants to play a very angry Nick Saban in the bowl game? Not Michigan, so we'll see what happens. Joff says, going to tell us about Boeing, which I got out of on a trailing stop this morning, though watching as it goes back up. I didn't know, I didn't put in Boeing this week. Uh, you'll see the, the, the um, stories that we're talking about this week. And I am going to introduce a, ne a new segment this week. Joey doesn't even know about it yet. But I'm going to introduce a new segment this week to keep you guys apprised of what's moving at all times. All right, so that's going to be something that we're going to do new here today. What we always start off with is what's going on in the market. Why? Because market timing is important. For those of you who are new uh, uh, without the VectorVest software, market timing is key for what we do. All right, you know, understanding if the market is bullish, if the market is bearish, or if it's moving sideways, market timing is key so that you can invest on the right side of the market. All right, so we always start with the home page of the VectorVest software. Which one do I want, Joey? This one. All right. When you open up the VectorVest software, here's the home page. And we're looking at today's information. Our market timing gauge is pegged in the green. The color guard is bullish. VectorVest does advocate buying safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price at this time. So keeping that in mind, today is a good day to buy. How else do I know that today is a good day to buy? Look at all of the major indices. The Dow is up 143 points for a percentage change of half a percent. Notice across the board, with the exception of the vector vest composite, everything's up very close to about a half a percent. But as a vector vest subscriber, we do use the vector vest composite as a means to timing the market because the vector vest composite tracks the move of 82, almost 8,300 stocks. From that perspective, we feel that it's a better representation of the broad market movement. That's why we use the VectorVest composite for timing the market. And we can clearly... Oh, can I keep talking? Yeah, you can keep talking. All right. And then also on our color guard, all right, this is our, this is our um, traffic light into the market. A lot of green lights popping up, still more yellow lights. Let me check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's nine green and nine yellow. We're dead even. A lot of bullishness. Today is the first day in a long time. We've got three green lights across the top. Uh, the three indicators that are tracked in the color guard are the price of the vector vest composite, which is tracking the 8,200 stocks that we track. RT looks at the short-term price trend in the market, tells me if the market is in an uptrend or not, cast on a scale between zero and two. Currently, we are above the value of one. The market is officially back in an uptrend. 
and the buy to sell ratio, which looks at the overall health of the market, because every stock in our database gets a buy, a sell, or a hold recommendation. The buy to sell ratio looks at the relationship of buys divided by sells. Currently, we have more buys in the system than sells, so the market is showing signs of strength as the market is moving higher, more stocks right now are becoming buy recommendations, taking advantage of the rally in the market. Now, with all of this being said, let's go look at what we call the market timing graph. This is the indicator that looks at that movement of the 8,200 stocks in the market. Let's go, let me go pull up my market timing graph. There we go. This is the movement of 8,200 stocks in one ticker symbol, the VVC, shown here in candlesticks. Most recently, over the last three months or so, what's the market doing? Definitely running higher. Now, do we have pullbacks in, a down, in an uptrending market? Sure we do. But most, right, most recently, with today's activity intraday, we did hit a new intraday high on the Vector Vest composite. We've pulled back a little bit since then. But nonetheless, a new high over the last three months. The market is moving higher. Good green open candle. Now that we have all of this information, let's find out from a news perspective what's moving the market. And Joey, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. We'll start from the beginning. What are the two things that are moving the market? Anybody want to type it in the room? Who? I don't know. Joey's yelling at me, folks. Um, what two things are moving the markets? This is one of them. What's the other thing? What's the two things that are moving the market? GE was upgraded to a buy today. Um, Paul, I'm going to keep my eye on that. That's not one of the stocks that we're going to look at uh, from the news perspective, but we'll look at that. Um, what two things are moving the market? Not the jockey club, Jay. Um, news, price action, still not the two things I'm looking for. How about, the, I'll help you out. The two things that are moving the market are interest rates and the trade deal. Interest rates and the trade deal. All right, two things moving the market, the Fed and earnings per share. The Fed, I'll go with the interest rates and the earnings per share. News-wise, not it. The two main stories that are in the market, moving the market, are... Uh, the Fed, as far as the interest rates, what are they going to do with interest rates and uh, the on and off deal with the U.S. and China. Man, and tweets will move it. You're right, Jay. Tweets will move it. All right. So the Fed is expected to hold rates steady and vow to keep short term lending markets stable. That's important because if uh, interest rates are steady, if interest rates are in line with where everybody wants them to be or thinks that they should be, that bodes well for the market. The Fed is expected to complete, uh, conclude its December meeting on Wednesday, which was yesterday, by signaling it remains on hold for the time being and is monitoring economic developments. I did see some information come out yesterday, Nick. A story said that they were not going to raise rates for the year of 2020, which is kind of preemptive. Uh, they don't know what's going to happen in 2020, but as of right now, they're saying that, they may not, that they're not going to raise rates in 2020. Does that mean that rates won't continue to fall in 2020? We don't know. The Fed's job, in case anybody doesn't know it, the Fed's job is to look at the, uh, uh, the economy, look at jobs, and look at inflation. As long as they are intact, they shouldn't have to do anything with interest rates. You will normally raise interest rates to slow down a thriving economy. And when an economy is not moving and you want to spur it on, you lower rates to generate uh, the economy to keep it moving. So with the economy doing the way it is right now, we're still at unemployment uh, lows. Um, a lot of people are working. A lot of people are participating in the job market. And inflation is at a level where it is still manageable. Keeping all of that in, in, in time or in um, perspective we shouldn't be lowering any rates more anymore right now. But there is pressure for the president to continue to lower rates so we can still remain the best economy globally. And a lot of other economies are going possibly into some recessionary um, um, mindsets, but we're not because we have a thriving economy and everything is good. And uh, I heard stories that we're looking to try to go into negative interest rates, which I think is kind of silly. I never thought that in my time, in my time of living on this earth, that we would have anybody ever say 
that we need to go to negative interest rates. I know that we want to stay better as far as an economy than anybody. We already are. So that's my two cents. That's my two cents. Glenn, I tend to be a buy and hold guy. Think about Microsoft, uh, AutoZone, and HIIG. Any thoughts? We'll take a look at those, Peter. I'm writing those down because at the end of this presentation, I will look at individual stocks for you. All right, Microsoft, AutoZone, and HIIG. All right, so H, that is, oh, it's H-I-G, H-I-G. Stop saying them wrong, Joey. It's H-I-G. So I'll take a look at them. If I buy you a Peloton for Christmas, will you use it? Wow. Are you trying to say I'm fat? But yeah, if you do, I'll use it. Right, Joey? Yep. Yeah, there we go. Sure. We'll keep it here. Me and jo Joey needs it more than I do. We'll keep it in my house. No, why are you going to keep it at your house? It'll be like both of ours. No, it'll, it'll be multiple hours, but here. Well, keep it no, you ain't keeping it at your house. All right, but yeah, I would, I would use it. I would definitely use it. All right, so keeping this in mind, let's go see what else is on the other side. So we see that interest rates are going to, looks like they're going to be pretty stable for the year, going into 2020. And then the next story, U.S. and China trade negotiators planning for a delay on December tariffs. That's huge. All right, that's really huge because if the tariffs go into play, and I think it's on December 15th, if they go hit, a lot of stocks, a lot of uh, companies are going to be adversely affected by it. So they are planning for a delay. That'll be good. And I also saw within this story that uh, China is picking up their imports, uh, imports of soybeans, which is a good thing too. U.S. and China trade negotiation negotiators are laying the groundwork for a delay of the fresh round of tariffs to kick on. There it is on December 15th, which is just a few days from now. Officials on both sides said as they haggle over how to get Beijing to commit to massive purchases of U.S. farm products on which President Trump is insisting for a near-term deal. So, uh, the president is saying, you want to come to the table? We can come to the table. We can take the tariffs off the table, but you got to commit to buying some of our stuff. And another story came out about uh, the China market or the Chinese government was increasing their orders of importing soybeans. All right. So now let's take a look at that. Let's get back into the software. Uh, how do I want to do this, Joey? I go into the software here um, and I want to go into my watch list. All right, let's take a, look, take a look at the stocks that we look at for timing the market. We're gonna look at the VectorVest Composite. And for those of you who do not have the VectorVest software, another way to look at it is to track it against the spiders, the SPY. So all I'm going to really do is look at them on a graph, right click on those two, view the stock graph. Let's move that over. Look at that VectorVest Composite moving up. Here's a 20-day exponential moving average on the VectorVest composite. A general rule of thumb, when the composite is above the 20-day exponential moving average, it's a good time to be in the market. When it's below, it's a good time to be out. Currently, we're nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average and moving higher. In the other indicator, the SPY looks pretty much the same. Remember, the spiders or the S&P 500 tracks 500 stocks, whereas the VectorVest composite tracks the movement of almost 8,300 stocks. There is a difference. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the software or would like refresher information about the software, click on this Getting Started video right here. Thanks to all of your input, here's a YouTube video that we think would be perfect for you. Click right here. If nothing else, folks, just hit the subscribe button right here.